was an integral part of the economic life of the age, the greatest colony in the world, the jewel possession of France, and the envy of every other imperialist nation. The whole structure rested on the labor of half a million slaves. In August 1791, after two years of the French Revolution and its repercussion in San Domingo, the slaves revolted. The struggle lasted for 12 years and ended in victory for the slaves against the richest and most powerful nation of the 18th century. It was the only successful slave revolution in human history, and it was the individual leadership of one man that was almost entirely responsible for this unique achievement. That man was Pierre Dominique Toussaint, surnamed Brega by his slave owner, and later called Loga II, the opening. We tell the story of this great man through the voice of his wife, Suzanne, as she remembers the events of that great revolution that led to both she and Toussaint being made captives by Napoleon Bonaparte and sent to France, where she is being retained in exile, far away from Toussaint, who was imprisoned in Fort de Joux, high in the French mountains. It is January 1804. Of the traitors, all will 
succeed. Ka Allah! Ka Allah! Ka Allah! There is hope. We will win. We will win. I tell you, we will win.
Toussaint has written and published a constitution for San Domingo. A constitution that declares that San Domingo now rules itself independently from France. And he has ordered me to take it and present it to Napoleon. Now I am your husband's friend and the friend of all those in San Domingo who want to retain this freedom that the revolution has promised all on its flag. <clears throat> so I warned him the best that I could. I said to him, in fact, this amounts to treason, Toussaint. Treason to your country of France, which you have so bravely defended with your blood and the blood of thousands of your countrymen. Black, white, mulatto, here in San Domingo. Domingo. Already in France they speak of Toussaint as the black Napoleon. He will devour your husband, <laughs> Suzanne. Napoleon sees himself as supreme leader of France in all her possessions. Napoleon Bonaparte is a traitor to the revolution. Toussaint believes that and so do I. Maybe so. But Napoleon has in his hands the armies of France to defend his claim. Toussaint has only some ignorant black ex-slaves, some color-struck mulattoes, even some ex-black slave owners who never ceased their efforts to defend it, to devour each other. And vicious white land owners, for whom the holy dollar is their only God. But I told them that they would devour each other and they will devour you. They cannot stand, even with you as their leader against the might of France. Which I can guarantee will be descending upon us as soon as the word of this constitution reaches the mainland. This is treason, Suzanne. Your husband is committing treason. Vincent, no one has been more loyal to the cause of our black people than you. But it is obvious that you are as ignorant as the least of them with regard to what is happening in France. I expect my husband told you that. He did. And I tried to reason with him. I told him, you can set up laws as commander in chief that will establish whatever the liberty that you desire, as he has done in this Constitution. It's good that he has declared that there is to be no distinction among men other than that of virtues and talents. He has incorporated an article that preserves the rights for all landowners, except for those that are left for France. The structured outline for municipal governments is sound. It is good that the church is strictly supported to the state. But I told him, you have set yourself up as a desperate governor of the colony. You must nominate all administrators. Every department of government must report directly to you. You have censorship for all printed matter. The assembly is in the hands of yourself, who you have appointed governor for life with the power to name your successor. But you cannot take that right to governor the colony from France. What did he say to that? His answer was, I still need guidance from French administrators, and I need French capital to educate and develop the country. Then he went on to say, but there must be absolute local independence. I told him this will never happen. I called him a dreamer. You did what? I called him a dreamer, Suzanne. Dreamer? You, you call a dreamer one who has taken a horde of half-naked, tormented, ignorant slaves, armed at first only with knives in their bare hands and sticks, and turn it into an army that will fight without fear all who would enslave them? You call that man a dreamer? You, you call a dreamer one who has, <coughs> who has brought all of it, all under control and all set all enslaved free in all of San Domingo. 
North, South, East, and West, Vincent. You call that man a dreamer? Suzanne, listen to me. France has declared liberty for all. The people will never agree to restoration of slavery. That is unthinkable. It is my fear that my husband will always feel in his heart that the Republic will do right. But on the other hand, he will never underestimate the, the treachery and tyranny of those who are dedicated to undermining their fellow man, like this greedy bourgeoisie in France. That's why he has written the Constitution, Vincent. And I beg Toussaint to give it another chance, else Bonaparte will destroy him. But Toussaint said that he had written Bonaparte over and over, asking for aid and explaining his position. Now, you know Bonaparte could never speak to a black man as an equal. So while Toussaint waited on his response, he felt that he had to take action to defend our position of liberty for all. I even accused your husband of vanity. You did what? I accused him of vanity, Suzanne. I was desperate. Vincent, what did you say? I want to see how you shaped your lips to make that accusation to my husband to his face. Well, I was as blunt as I could be. I said to him, are you certain that the pull of power has not overcome your quest for what is right? And as for the love of your people, this assembly of men that you supposedly gathered together to draft this constitution of yours, there is not one black. Now, does that not say that in truth that you've aligned yourself with those you consider superior? I'm sorry you took the conversation there, Vincent. You know my people believe that my husband stands with them forever. And he does not feel he has to explain his actions to them. He feels that they understand him and his actions without question. I reminded him, his own two generals, Mose, Christoph, condemned his actions. Then he went on to tell me that he had executed Mose, one of his most dedicated generals, for condemning his actions and disobeying orders. I could not believe what I was hearing. I know about Mose. Mose was wrong. But Toussaint was fatally wrong for executing him. I know he will forever regret killing Mose. My husband cannot enforce his commands. If, if he cannot command, if he cannot enforce them, he believes that in this struggle for success, for this in this great movement, that that, that he must. There's much he cannot reveal. <coughs> he he trusts. He trusts in the the belief of our people and his generals, black, white, and mulatto. Most of whom have followed him thus far, including yourself. You must trust him, Vincent. I do. So, take his constitution to Napoleon. Perhaps he will understand and listen to one of his own rather than to this lowly servant, this lowly slave, who has usurped his mighty power in the colony of San Domingo. Go, Vincent, and do as my husband has ordered you to do. I say to you, as I said to him, Suzanne, this very Declaration of Independence is the instrument of the defeat of our cause. The tragedy is his, yours, and your people's as well. Farewell, my friend. Try not to let on to Vincent how much his visit troubled me. It was not so much that you were sending him away, but that you, you had already sent another of your strong white supporters, Commissioner Sontanex, back to France. Madame. General Destiny, come in, come in. Thank you, Madame. I'm hearing the order of the commander to see if you and your family are safe and well. We are well. I'm worried. Come, come in, my dear. Come in. Come in. Have a seat. Sit here. <coughs> Sit here at my husband's desk. He would be so 
so pleased. Thank you. I should be asking about how are you? How's my <coughs> Truthfully, madam, the commander has been sick lately with the fever. But that would not slow down his step. He wants you to know that he is treating himself with herbs and that he knows that he will be better soon. He'll come home just for a few days so that I can tend to him. But I, I know that he will never leave his men. Yes, madam. And you, how are you? You, you and he must be weary from that. I am well, madam. But as for me, I will never be weary from battle until all of these white bosses are driven off of this island. And all of our people are safe and free. Forgive me, madam. But my language is too rough for the ears of a lady like yourself. I am an ex-lady like you, my general. I, there is nothing I haven't heard. Thank you, madam. But I just didn't want to be disrespectful to you and your own home. Yes. You have a lovely home, madam. Now, I know that I may seem to be someone that is made for the woods, but even now I am building a palace for myself, a palace of beauty and comfort, just like this one. Yes, the commander deserves a home like this. And so do you, my friend. Thank you again. My husband and I worked hard on this land to build this home and this plantation for, for our family. We were privileged to have been given our freedom. So we were able to have something of our own. Yes. That accounts perhaps for the commander's attitude of tolerance towards these white landowners. Nothing else seems to explain his actions towards them. What do you mean by that, my general? Madame, the commander has asked General Christophe and I to sign a letter petitioning to send Sultanates back to France. You know, he said that he would have no grievance against us if we did not sign. But he would like a record to show that he had his general support in what he was doing. He said that no matter what decision we made, that he was indeed sending some to next back to France. I know, my dear. My husband confided in me that he was going to do this. But uh, did he tell you why he was sending some to next back to France? No, ma'am. I did ask why. I didn't understand at first, at least to now. Madam. It is no secret that I have no love for these white serums, said to me. But now, Sultanate is an exception. I mean, if ever there was a white man who is a friend to the blacks, it is Sultanate. <coughs> if ever there was a white man who would be black, it is he. <laughs> no, ma'am. The commander did not say why he was sending Sultanate back to France, only that that was his decision. Did you and uh, General Christophe sign the petition? I made my mark, man. I don't know about General Christophe. We met the commander seven. And I did ask him if he signed. I knew some of the other generals did and some didn't. We were all so surprised on the commander's part. I have not. I have not had the opportunity to speak with my husband since this happened. But how did Sartanakes react? He was bewildered. He was outraged, nearly lost his mind when he heard out about it. At first he refused to go. But the commander had to pray him to have him forcefully escorted onto the ship when the time came. <laughs> when he heard out about it, he called me into his office to personally tell me that he was being sent back to France. It seems to me that he was trying to rally up all of the other generals in his defense. Oh, he went on and on talking about how could the commander just turn on him after he fought so badly for the freedom of all? How could he just throw him to the wolves for all the young lives in Paris to undo all that the French Revolution has accomplished? Quite frankly, madam, I can feel how Sultan X was betrayed. I mean, after all, he was the first to declare that all the blacks in the colony should be free. And the commander thought that his command and by his side. What were all the battles with the white landowners, the Spanish, and those British dogs, as he called them, to keep them from restoring the old world of slavery? Like I said, madam, Sultan X has been as much for the blacks as any white man could ever be. Now, I have to give him that. All know, my gentlemen, Sartre next has been a friend to the blacks. He's even sent blacks to France to study so that all could be educated in the colony. My sons are happy to get among them. But, but my general, we must understand that even though these white landowners deserve our hatred, Sartre next does not do all that he does because he loves black people. He 
does what he does, much of it, out of hatred for the wrongs done to women by the white Frenchmen, by the greedy bourgeoisie and those leaders of France that made the revolution necessary. These white landowners represent those people to hear. We must be careful that what Sartre does does not do more to satisfy his need for revenge than it does to satisfy our need for freedom. Yes, but that so-called secret plan where he plans to massacre all the whites here in San Domingo. You know about that? Of course, madame. I mean, whites cannot keep a secret from blacks here in San Domingo. You know that. Well, then you know my husband. And you know he would not allow that. And that's why he's sending some of the next back to France. Yes, madam. You know, I soon began to realize that that was the real reason why he was sending Sultanates back to France. But I don't know, man. I mean, I'm just an ignorant ex-slave. Now, we may not be able to come out with what, but I have to agree with Sultanates. I feel that we must kill all these whites while we have the chance. Or else, as Sultanates says, that we will regain power and restore the old order of slave. Now, man, you can tell that the back of our command is not mutilated like mine with the scars from the wounds by so many masters. I curse everything what? Everything that is French. I would not read their language even if I could read. I want nothing of theirs. I only want them my freedom. Now, me and most of my black brothers have suffered through slavery at the hands of these whites that our commander's generosity protects. I mean, more violence than mankind should ever endure. And they have taught us the lesson of cruelty well. I have learned my lessons well. And I will practice them on our enemies until the day total freedom is won.
my husband, it, it was enough that I thought that Vince and Jenny Vincent and Jonathan X. Bank of France was wrong. It was just that you would not explain your actions. You would not even explain your actions to your most faithful Gerald, Gasoline. You would say, it was not your way. I, I must keep my own confidence. My decisions are mine. My husband, it was his insistence on keeping your things to yourself that worried me. I mean, how long would your generals and your people just follow you blindly? I was the only one in whom you totally confided. <coughs> in spite of my private concern, I believed in you. And I, and I tried to reassure you that in your actions and in your decisions, you used your best judgment in the moment. And that's all that any of us could do. <laughs> I remember one time my husband, you asked, you said to me, have I grown too old for this fight? And I laughed and I called you silly. I said, no, you are older but wiser. And I had to even reassure you that how much your your soldiers worshipped you. I, I said to you, I said, I don't think they love you, but I think they fear you. And you <coughs> said, is that good? And I said, yes. Fear is the emotion that we slaves understand most completely. Slavery taught us that. And then I had to tell you how your soldiers would, could not resist following you, my husband, because you stand in their lead in battle. They, they would say, look, our leader rides in front. See how brave he is. He rides in front and see how he rides. They say he taught himself when he was still a slave. I told you, my husband, that that is why they followed you even when they had no weapons. In my heart, I, I believed everything that I told you. I meant everything that I told you. But in, in my heart, I felt that terrible trouble loomed ahead. I did not know, was it my intuition or, or were the spirits of my ancestors speaking to me? I had to know, had to know, had to know. My lady Suzanne, welcome. Mom, welcome to my humble home. Oh, your welcome is always so warm. How are you, my lady? I am well, Mom. And you? I am well also. It's so good. Let me place a stool for you by the table. Let me help you, Mom. No, no, no. You are too kind to your humble servant. After all, you are the wife of our great governor. Here, my lady, sit. <coughs> sit. I am Thank so you. honored by your visit. Let me bring us some broth. It is better to cook outdoors than to suffocate from the heat in this small cabin. <coughs> My lady, I hear there's a great celebration going on over the new constitution. Does it really make us free, free from the tyrants? I, I've only heard about the constitution second hand, my mother. Uh, and I know that while our people are celebrating, there are many whites who greatly oppose it. And as to does it make us free, if my husband's words can make us free, we would have been free a long time ago. No, but um, it's only a proclamation, a, a declaration of the new free. But, Mongo, I am so worried. I, I'm worried that, uh, that my husband's generals and our people will not understand what he's trying to do with this new constitution. And I'm worried that they will not understand why he has sent two of us 
swung his quiet supporters back to France. And I'm worried that, that they will not understand these laws of strict discipline that he's imposed on colleagues. Call me, call on, my lady. All that is too much to deal with at once. Can we first just deal with the broth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your broth will make me whole. That's why I come. You know, Mongo, it is only the food prepared by you and me and a few of the black laborers that my husband and I can partake of these days. We will fear poisoning. Our enemies are everywhere. Fear not, my lady. My broth will always be safe for you and my government. But first, let us call upon Bondi and the Ewai to bless what we consume. Oh, mighty Bandai, our one and only God, and all you spirits of the universe, look upon the worthy wife of our governor and me, your humble servants. Bless us, protect us, and help us in this world of sin. Nourish our bodies for your bounty. Passionate, tempered by mercy, 
it seems that the people God I serve and the Catholic God who and he serve have conspired to send him to be our leader, a fierce warrior, but one of compassion and mercy. Is he a leader of compassion and mercy, Rumble? Yes. That is part of what I came to talk to you about. Have you not heard? He killed his own nephew, Marseille, because he would he, he would not support, he supported a revolt of, of black, what he called forced plantation labor. He was opposed to these returning white landowners because my husband would not rise to I mean, Morse could not rise to my husband's new level of severity. He closed his heart. I wonder, Uncle, is this the man that I married? That, you know, the father of my children? Your husband is a great man. But he is human, too. Perhaps that is what he has forgotten. When you forget your humanity, you lose your humanity. We must remind him of his beginnings. Make him think from whence he came. He will regain himself. He was destined to become our leader of this great revolution. I know that's what he says, and that's what the spirits have assured me is true. You say you know he was destined to be the leader of the revolution. What else? What else do you know about my husband, Wise Mama? I know that he's the son of an African prince who was captured and brought to San Domingo as a slave. He was later purchased by the masters of the Brooklyn plantation, who saw that he was special. So they gave him some privileges, some slaves to cultivate some land. He married a fellow slave embraced the Catholic God, had five sons, your husband being the oldest. Well, now, did your voodoo God give you this information, Mama? No, 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 my lady. My voodoo people gave me this information. Their great mind travels faster than any inspiration from our God. Oh. Well, what else have they told you about my husband? They said he was never sent to work at Cainfields, that he was allowed to tend flock. And later he made coachman and then steward of all livestock, a position usually only given to the whites. And then, after 10 years, he married a free black. And in time, he and your children were given their freedom also. It makes me sad to even think about my children, Mumble. You know, we sent Isaac and Lizzie to, to pass the study, but Napoleon not let them return to us. Don't worry, my lady. My spirits have assured me that that too will be resolved. I pray that that is so. But back to the story. Since your voodoo, uh, uh, your grapevine, and your spirits are the source of your information, did they tell you why I married uh, your commander? No. Because I'm the only one that knows that. You know, when your commander was a little boy, he was so skinny. They call him Francis Baton, which means a confused stick, you know. <laughs> and, and he had to struggle so hard to develop his body. And then after that, he, he struggled to develop his skill as a horse. But he, he, was, <clears throat> he was so devoted to everything he did and committed to everything he did, you couldn't help but love him. At least that's why I fell in love with him. And after pretending that I wasn't too interested, I decided to marry him, or I agreed to marry him. <laughs> well, my lady, isn't that how to do it? Play like, hurry up and catch me when I'm really catching you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I'm a smart man, that's all. And my husband, my husband was not only a skilled horseman, but he was skilled in the use of herbs and plants. He still is. And he treats his some of his own soldiers. He learned that from his father, who of course learned it in Africa. But the little French and black and geometry that my husband knows, he learned from his godfather, Pierre Baptiste. 
an old ex-lady learning from a missionary. So you see, my lady, our gods placed him in a position of privilege so he could profit from the system he would be fighting. He has been greatly blessed. He was blessed. But the greatest blessing, Mama, was that he learned to read. He said he read everything he had his hands on. But he read especially the writings of a priest called Abbe Renaud, who said in his writings, who he called for in his writings, a slave revolution in San Domingo. The Renaud said, only a courageous chief is needed. Where is he? My husband said, as soon as he read that, he knew that he was that chief. And he has been that courageous chief since he first joined the fight, my lady. Yes. Yes, he is. He's that courageous chief. And now he feels that he not only has to lead us in our fight for freedom, but he must lead us in taking our freedom, declaring ourselves free. Because after 11 years of battle, the battle of the French and the Spanish and the English, all of whom would make us slaves again, our gospel freedom is still not guaranteed. That's why he has written that constitution, Mongo. Have you heard that he has sent the Constitution by Vincent, Colonel Vincent, back to France for Napoleon to read it personally? Because Napoleon has ignored all of his letters that he's written, declared allegiance to the Republic. Yes, my lady. And before that, I heard he sent Commissioner Sontanex back to France as well. What do you think about that? Does that frighten you or confuse you like it does? My husband's generals and the people are people? No, my lady. I trust my government. I have seen what he has done for our people since he first joined the fight. I do not need to understand his actions and decisions. But our, our people, ex things like you and me, they hear about my husband's going on in the, in the capital, you know, his great audiences. How he's surrounded by all of these people who all adore him, men and women alike. And how most of these people are mulattoes and whites. And they do not share your trust. Our people do not share your trust. They feel he is taking us back to the old ways, with the white and mulattoes on the top and the blacks on the bottom. Well, we know, my lady, we know that that's not true. All of my governor's generals and his chief officers in his army are black, but our black people are laborers. We must work, but this time we will work for wages, fair wages, and the land we cultivate will feed us all, enrich our lives here in San Benito. That's what they don't understand, That's what my husband has got to explain to them, else I fear that he will lose their trust. Your husband is a wise man, my lady. He will eventually explain to them that they do not have to fear the whites here in San Domingo as much as the whites in France. Those are the ones who can put us back into slavery. Well, I hear France are already calling him the Black Napoleon. You see, you see, that's the real danger there, my lady. Prejudice and jealousy. That's the real danger. Well, then, you mumble, my husband has some strange ideas. You know, I, I chastised Vincent greatly for calling him a dreamer. Well, my lady, there's dreams. Then there's understanding of one's destiny. Well, tell me, mumble, which is this? Come, tell me. My husband says that now he not only dreams that it is the destiny of San Domingo to be free, but it, that it is the destiny of millions of Africans in Africa to be free. He says he wants to take his soldiers and go across the sea and conquer back the lands that the Europeans have conquered in slave trade and make millions of Africans French and free. He, he says he's even sending millions of Franks to America to wait till the day he is ready. Well, my lady, it is the destiny of San Domingo to be free. But as for freedom for millions of Africans in Africa from the European conquerors, that day will happen too. But it will be many, many years from now. 
and your husband will not be a part of that victim. That, my lady, is a dream. A dream that will not come true. Well, why do you say that, Mama? Well, why do you say that? My spirits, my lady, my spirits have spoken. Well, what do your spirits say? What do you say? I cannot say, my lady, only that their words in part make me shame real. Wait, Mama, do, do they say that my husband will not be able to make millions of Africans in Africa free? <coughs> is that what they say? Answer me, Mama. I must know what the future holds for us. Well, my lady, if you must know, not only do they say that, they say that the enemy will come in great numbers from our motherland, France, to take back San Domingo and re enslave our people. They say that before the battle is over, the soldiers of Napoleon's army will put my governor in chains. Take him, you, and your whole family across the sea to be in prison in the land you look to for liberty. In chains? <laughs> How is it? You, you just said that my husband's actions and decisions were wise and justified and right, and you knew your spirits had told you that he would be captured? I can say those things because his decisions and actions are justified. But the French will put him down, my lady. And the masses and the generals will not know how to respond because of his past actions and decisions. But there will be victory for our cause here in San Domingo. But what about us? But what about me and my husband and my family? How can that be victory? I don't tell my husband because we cannot be captured. He knows, my lady. He knows it is in his destiny to be betrayed. But he also believed it is the destiny of San Domingo to be free. This cannot happen, my boy. This destiny to be taken must not be for us. They will kill my husband if this happens. The spirits must be mistaken. No, my lady. Well, then you must have misunderstood. No, my lady. The spirits lie. They lie. The spirits lie. I, I must go back and deal with my Catholic God because Tucson was right to have for voodoo. Because the spirits lie, my boy. Surely they lie. They stay lie, my boy. The spirits they lie. The spirits do not lie, my lady. The spirits do not lie.
carried by the great navy of France. Thousands, thousands who had come. I could feel my lips Burma. We should perish. For it seems that all of France has come to overcome us. Thousands of French soldiers sent by Napoleon, led by his strongest general, Emmanuel Leclerc, his own brother-in-law. You know me. Suzanne. You know me. Until the moment I saw all of those ships off the harbor, I had clung to the belief that what was morally right would prevail. I had hoped that Napoleon would recognize the brave fight of the French people for freedom and liberty for everyone. But that was not to be. That was not to be. That was not to be. Indeed, he has sent his armies to put we black rebels down. He has instructed Leclerc to rip the epaulets from the shoulders of every black general. He has, no doubt, I am sure, instructed Leclerc to re-establish slavery in San Domingo once again. Slavery! I'm afraid it is all right to be afraid. It is only human to be afraid. My darling, I am human, but I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I must resist. I must Resist. I don't care if they send all of the soldiers in the world. They will not take back from us the taste of freedom. A freedom that we so richly deserve. Our freedom. I will resist. That is why I have come to finally learn that we must destroy or be destroyed. I've sent a letter to Desolene. I've ordered him. I've ordered him to make sure that the soil that we bathe with our sacred sweat does not provide an ounce of sustenance to our enemies. I have ordered Desolene to tear up the roads with shot and blast. I have ordered him to take the dead corpses of the men, the dead corpses of the horses, and throw them in the fountains. I've ordered him to burn, to annihilate everything, so that those who come to put us back in slavery, they will have before their eyes a hell. That's what they deserve, a hell. Mambo, 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 and you and I both know that my destiny is to lead our people in this fight for freedom. That is my destiny. Now, if the day comes that I am taken, then they shall have only cut down the tree of liberty and freedom. Its roots have grown deep and strong, and the tree of liberty and freedom shall rise again. That is why I must do what I must do. If I am taken, then our destiny is still freedom, but our people 
will be free one day. Suzanne, I must go now. I gotta go. But you stay here. Our soldiers will see that you are safe. And don't worry. Don't worry, my dear. Don't worry. We shall fight now harder than we have ever fought before. Ka ara. Ka ara. There is hope. We shall win. how he fought at the ravine I killed her. 
But he defeated Leclerc's great general Rochambeau. Even though that devil declares the victory, the victory was the commanders. I mean, he had only 600 men and few auxiliaries and led them to the attack. You know, they say Rochambeau is still running. <laughs> they say before the battle, he gave his men a speech with the fury. They say, right on my. He said, you are going to fight against men who have neither faith, law, nor religion. But they promise you liberty. They attend your servitude. But why have so many ships traverse the oceans, if not again to throw you into chains? But he said, in effect, that for 10 years we have made a land of slavery into a beautiful land of liberty. But we cannot let the foe snatch this out of our hands. You know, that speech is part of why they fought so ferociously. I mean, they saw him and they heard him calling them into battle. The commander understands now that. He understands now that we must sacrifice most of what we have built with our labor and our blood and sweat to maintain the freedom that we have tasted. I am just thankful that he is in that place now. Well, we must pray that he remains in that place, my general. You know, I, I know him better than anyone else. Yes, and I know that deep in his heart, he still believes that the Republic will do right. And I believe that Napoleon sees that I believe that Napoleon believes that that weakness will lead to his undoing. You know, perhaps, about this plot that Napoleon has tried to implement using our socks. Yes, ma'am, I have heard. You know, he is as clever and unscrupulous as they say. Personally, I think he's a dog in a one of these emperor's clothes. A real force to be reckoned with. I don't think he, he, he thinks he's an emperor already. And I don't think he thinks he's a dog. I think he thinks he's a two-legged fox. <laughs> then you know about you know about that plot. He has he has sent my sons finally Isaac and Percy back from their studies, but he sent them accompanied by a tutor, who presented a letter to my husband from Napoleon, guaranteeing freedom for all slaves, and asking my husband if he would assist Leclerc in ruling the colony. Anybody with any sense could know, could sense the threat in that letter if my husband refused. You know, Madam, I would have shot that bastard messenger of evil on the spot. Once, my general, I agree with your violent nature. I would have shot it to me. <laughs> but instead, my husband sent a, a, a letter to, to the clerk offering or proposing a mutual ceasefire. Now, we knew that the clerk would refuse, but he gave him the option. So the clerk wrote back saying that he, if he would only come and discuss it, all would be well. That he would make him first lieutenant. But if he did not, in four days, answer the clerk, he would be declared an outlaw. Now, they say your son's pleading with the commander to see the clerk, man. Yes. But he told them they had to make a decision. He said, he told them that he would love them no matter what they decided, but that he had a duty for his people. Placide said he wanted to fight for his father, so my husband gave him a battalion of his soldiers and sent him in the battle. Isaac said he wanted to uh, go back to France, but I made him stay. So the plot failed. But when Clark and Napoleon are not through, they will not stop until they have got my husband. They feel they have to get him to cut the heart out of the resistance. Yes, but none of that is about to happen, madam. I mean, the commander is talking to the people, and once again, they are listening. Because the true heart of resistance is in them. Now, the clerk's first attempts to totally destroy us have failed completely. The battle cannot deal with how we fight. Thousands of his men are in hospitals. Are dead, but our forces are still intact. And the commander outsmarts the clerk at every turn, just as we are about to do now. How so? Well, the commander thinks that the clerk is determined to attack us while our forces are strong and correct. So I'll be taking orders from the commander to General Christophe to head back towards the rest to keep our forces there strong and ready. Madam, the commander is planning to stop the clerk. Well, it's the most daring in the war so far. It's a new offense. Can you share with me the plan, Adam? Well, the commander is planning to head north. Taking his most faithful soldiers with him, he plans to raise and organize the black laborers and add them to his army. 
Meanwhile, he plans to threaten to cut off the clerk's long line of communication with the cap. The commander knows that the French will be headed south towards Barrett. They will have to pass near the fort at Puerto Peru. So the commander has ordered me to distract them by bringing them into a battle with Puerto Peru. And stop them, madam. We will. Those bastards have yet to see the hell's fire their forces will meet if they try to attack Puerto Peru. They will see firsthand what it is like to fight against those who will not be defeated. I pray to that happens. You know, some may think that I don't, but I do. But I pray for strength. Strength to do unto them as they do unto us. Kill without mercy. But I pray to Bundai, for the commander has forbidden the practice of voodoo. But he cannot deny that the practice of voodoo is the religion of our ancestors. And it is upon their spirits that will help us ride to victory. There is only one God. The Catholic God and the God of Hulu are one and the same. And, and he, he is on the side of right, and that's our side. So he will watch over you. So go, my dear, and be blessed.
Bosses will not find safety in retreat this time. You need to do the back wall, down to the front, for those blacks on the visit. Follow those cowards. The back of you, fire! And hold fast, and we'll be back. A couple minutes I leave down the side wall. I must get help from my left, it's nearby. We need more men. But you must promise me, you must never surrender. You must hold this fort and fight, fight! And oh, how they fought! They were singing the Ka-A-Ra! Ka-A-Ra! Some women were in the fort too. That made me proud. They were fighting just as fiercely as the men. The French army had never seen anything like how our people fought. We raised a red flag to each of the four corners of the fortress as a sign we would not surrender. Outside, Desmond and his laboring recruits were wearing down the French soldiers and murdering every white in sight. <laughs> but still, the French wouldn't be outdone. They killed hundreds of black prisoners at a time. They advanced on the fort and surrounded it with 12,000 soldiers. But still, the blacks in the countryside led by Desaline and the blacks in the fortress, inspired by his word, fought on without fear, singing the Ka-A-Ra, Ka-A-Ra, there is hope. Time to surrender. Well, I 
know Leclerc's forces are, are in bad shape, and Leclerc himself is nearly half dead, but he will never surrender. Napoleon will not allow it. Yes, madam. The commander thinks that Leclerc will beg Napoleon to allow him to surrender in order to keep his forces from totally getting wiped out. Leclerc is scared half to death of thousands of blacks who are encouraged by the persuasion of the commander. I mean, they are swarming out in the countryside to join with us and fight in ways that only we know how. I mean, you know that, Am. Appearing and disappearing so suddenly. Jumping huge stones over the bridge they pass below. Throwing huge stones down the mountain to crush their bodies. Blockading the path and throwing bushes. Even the mulattoes are ready to come on our side and fight. Now that they have seen that the French will not find favor in them either. But despite of all these desertions, there still remain five or six leaders and generals like myself who will remain loyal to Toussaint Lovitch. We are ready to fight these French to the death, and so am I. Toussaint. Madame Toussaint still feels that we can win all of San Domingo without destroying all of it. I mean, like we said when we spoke before, deep down he still feels that France will do right. Has not changed, but Napoleon has not changed either. He will <coughs> never give in to a black man. Yes. The commander thinks that Napoleon will soon come to see that we ex slaves, who he so despised, are determined to not go back into bondage, and that we are indeed defeating the great General Leclerc. So the commander has written a letter to Napoleon, pledging his allegiance to France, but asking for another general to take command of the colony one who would seek to not reinstate slavery. Well, he knows Napoleon has ordered the clerk to do just that. Yes, but the commander believes that Napoleon will accept his declaration of allegiance to the Republic and use that as an excuse to withdraw what's left of the clerk's forces rather than face the humiliation of inevitable defeat by we ex-slaves. The commander felt that perhaps his only mistake was that he did not share his strategy with General Christophe who you may not have known has gone over and joined the Kirk with his army. I did not know. I mean, did he do that before or after he had learned that my husband had submitted? That rascal went before. He explained, believe it or not. He felt that the commander was indirectly responsible for him joining the Kirk's army. Well, how could that be? General the Kirk asked to speak with Christophe. So the commander gave him orders to go and see what Christophe had to, what the Kirk had to say. So the clerk tried to get Christophe to seize the commander, but he rejected it and told the commander about it. Then later on, the clerk asked to speak with Christophe once again. He assured him that if only he would join his army, that he would retain all of his generals at their commands. And that was enough for him to desert our cause? Seems that way, madam. You know, I'm not surprised. He has often said that he did not feel that he should fight for a cause that he did not think that we could win. Besides, Christoph likes comfort. He has often said that he is tired of living in the woods like a bandit. Well, I just hope that General Leclerc give him a lifestyle that suits his needs. I'm sorry to hear about General Christoph. Perhaps he will
continue to fight this war. But I'm not fighting this war to come at it with two faces. Why do you mean two faces? These one of secret negotiations, hoping that right will win out. And one of the most violent military opposition to those who seek to reinstate slavery. You know, I will simply fight this war with a single face. And I believe that all of the other generals, including General Christoph, will join me. I will fight this war with a single face. A single face. I will fight this war with a single face. A single face. I will go to the meeting. 
I must go. Suzanne. Suzanne. You stay here. I must go to the meeting. Don't worry. We will fight. We will win. Ka'ara! We will win! I shall return. Jump! 
said we would. We have won. Farewell, France, forever. Long live the nation of Haiti.